Okay, everyone, this module is going to talk about the, um, the art and the process of delegating authority out to those who, who work under us and report to us. Um, and, and we'll go through a couple of steps on, on how to do that and how to do that appropriately from this managerial level um, that most of you will hopefully find yourselves in. So, you know, when you really start to think about it, you know, think back to the organizational chart that we just looked at. The, the organization is lifeless just on this chart. You know, it's just a piece of paper sitting on somebody's desk somewhere in the organization and doesn't really work to, to come to life, for lack of a better term, until you start delegating out authority. Um, and this can be, this is really an art. Um, it's just another one of those skills that you have to become really good at. Um, and unfortunately for some people, this can be a real struggle. So, you know, overall it's important, you know, why would you even think that's important to, to be knowledgeable of this chain of command? And it's important that everybody that works in the organization, and particularly those that will be working under you, um, knows who they report to. And we have that sense of clarity in terms of our lines of communication. It can help decrease uh, frustration amongst employees overall. So believe it or not, there's actually process steps to delegating out authority. Um, we're going to go in each one of these a little bit more detail, but these are this is an overview of those three critical steps to um, the process of delegation. So the first one, uh, when we talk about assigning duties, uh, here we're just really laying out what needs to be done, but we're not necessarily giving that person the how. Um, just because we don't want to discourage their innovation, their creativity, um, and, and if we start giving out the how of of the task that needs that that needs to be done, the task at hand, um, we start to to work ourselves into micromanagement, um, which we talked about a couple lectures ago. Uh, the second step, um, granting permission. Um, think back to you know we talked about the parity principle in regards to this, but just giving you know the authority to complete those tasks, and then creating the obligation. Uh, just remembering that ultimately, you know, the responsibility lies with you, the person delegating out that that um, activity that needs to be completed. And sometimes individuals won't accept that obligation right away, um, which we're going to talk about in just a second. So guys, just be aware, um, and I'm sure, you know, some, if not most of you have experienced this through, um, if you're working in the healthcare field right now, or even in another career or job that you're working in, employees can really tell when they're kind of being dumped on, when they're getting the stuff nobody else wants to do. Uh, so how you go about assigning these duties is really important because, you know, again, employees can tell when you're assigning out stuff that you just don't want to do, and that's greatly going to impact their level of respect and their authority acceptance of you. Um, so remember, you know, we have Bernard's communication recommendations, the four recommendations. You know, we understand the communication. Um, it's consistent with the purpose of the organization. The person has a personal interest, and they uh, are able to fully comply with, with that recommendation. Um, so think back to Sun Tzu's Art of War. Uh, you know, the general, you know, gave the order and the men laughed for the first time and the general kind of stepped back and said, okay, if they don't understand the first time, the command the first time and they don't act, I need to go back and restate it. Maybe I wasn't clear enough. Um, but if I give it to them a second time and they still don't act, then we have to start um, acting in a disciplinary manner. So when we move into step two, um, which revolves around granting permission, um, the point that I really want to stress here and get across to you guys is that it's really a sign of very poor supervision and poor leadership if nobody can take over for you when you're absent. If you leave the facility for whatever reason, vacation, or you decide to take a, another position somewhere else, um, and that facility falls apart without you, that's a sign of, 
of poor leadership, as crazy as it sounds, you know, we all want to do a good job, um, but we want to set our employees up to be successful. So if we see, you know, the, the organization, the department, whatever it may be, falling apart because nobody can take over when you're absent, that's really a sign that you've not really trained anybody, you've not really empowered your employees. I mean, you're not really granting them the authority they need uh, to grow as individuals and grow as professionals. Because when we move in and start talking about the exception principle, um, this should really, you know, think about this, it should be the exception, not the rule. Um, meaning that if you have uh, an individual who is trying to make decisions um, that are just a little bit beyond their scope of authority, um, and they have to keep referring those back to you as their immediate supervisor, um, that should really be the exception, not something that really happens all the time. We want to empower others. We want to be able to delegate um, these activities out appropriately and make sure that our employees that we're delegating to have the uh, appropriate amount of authority granted to them to be able to accomplish this task. So the equity of three, um, you know, so this can sometimes happen and, and it can be a little bit disastrous. Let me go back one. Um, can be a little bit disastrous, like I was saying. Uh, responsibility, just what I, and what I mean by that, the weight of the job really works to exceed the authority that's been given to the individual. Um, which goes back to the exception uh, and parity principle. Um, we're, we've just not given them enough authority again um, to, to accomplish the, the things that they need to. So the example we have here, let's say you're a pharmacy director and you've been tasked with implementing this new barcode system within the next three months. And you have to work with the CIO, the chief information officer, and the engineering director on this project. Well, neither one of those positions report to you. Um, and they say their plates are full, you're just going to have to handle this by yourself. You don't really have the authority to um, delegate these tasks out for them to do, and you might have to keep going to their superiors and their one-up, um, roping people in, which can be quite frustrating. So as you start delegating tasks out, just be very aware and very cognizant of the amount of authority people have or that you're granting to them as you are delegating these tasks out, making sure that you're aligning those appropriately. But some of the best advice I can give you guys um, as you move into the workforce um, and something that I hope you'll remember is how integral recognition is to your employees. Um, you need to be able to recognize people. You know, it doesn't have to be for anything large. You know, great job today on that report. Um, just those little attaboy, th you know, little attaboy moments that you can give them really help to create a very cohesive workforce um, and, and makes people feel like they're valued in the organization because if they're not valued they're going to leave and go somewhere else and then you're going to be in a real bind. Um, two things that I want to point out here um, and, and these again are the two things I want you to remember as you as you move on in your careers. You want to praise in public and correct in private. Um, you don't ever want to be that person, that superior, that manager who corrects people in front of others because this can really work against you. Um, you think it, you may be asserting your authority in front of others, but this actually has a reverse effect and 
uh, works against you, um, creating distrust in you as a leader amongst your employees and those that report up to you. So just remember, you know, praise in public, correct in private. So we talk about the differences in centralization and decentralization. Um, centralization, those are the types of organizations that really hold things close to the best. Um, their functions as an organization are not necessarily always delegated out widely. They kind of like try to keep responsibility close to them. Um, but decentralization is almost on the other end of the spectrum. You, your employees have a lot of autonomy with decision-making responsibility. Um, and we see a lot of healthcare institutions kind of go into this decentralized model um, just because we have so many people with such a wide array of knowledge, we need the creativity of the people around us. Um, but again, you know, like we said earlier, um, dele delegating out uh, for whatever reason is very hard for some people and they just simply don't want to do it. So think about a time, you know, that you were either at, you know, at your work, at your career, at a, a club, you know, an organization or a club that you may belong to, um, where this happened to you. Um, people, your superior, your one up was just very micromanaging um, and didn't want to delegate out the, the, this authority, you know, how did that make you feel overall? Did you really trust that person as a leader? Um, and the message, you know, overall that's conveyed here is that you as a leader do not really trust your subordinates to, to complete the task at hand. So guys, as I go through these questions um, that you're reading, you know, if you answered yes to three or more really of these questions, you may have a problem with delegating. And again, you know, delegating, some people it comes naturally to, some people it, it's a skill that you have to really work and cultivate. cultivate. Um, but you really have to learn how to delegate out. It's going to be an essential part of your job as a supervisor uh, or as someone in that managerial role to be able to delegate tasks out, um, show that level of trust and, and grant that authority to those who work for you. Mm -hmm. Guys, I'll finish going through the slides, um, but as far as lecture material, we're at an end here and we'll pick up next time.